Being able to select elements and traverse through the DOM is one of the most important skills you can learn in JavaScript. And in this video, I'm going to share with you the nine techniques you need to understand in order to be a master at traversing the DOM. Let's get started now. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Also, I just launched my JavaScript Simplified course a few days ago, so if you're interested in that, make sure you check it out down in the description below. It covers everything you need to know about JavaScript, beginner and advanced skills, and it's only going to be available until the end of Monday, so you only have a few more days to get that. And if you're from the future and you missed this opportunity, you can still go to the link, enter your email, and I'll let you know as soon as the course is live again. So to get started with this, we're going to be going over all the ways that you can traverse through the DOM in JavaScript. And to get started, I have a really simple HTML file with a few different styles in it. And essentially, this is our structure of our HTML. We have one grandparent element, which is this red square that you see on the right side of the screen. Then we have two parent elements. Those are the green rectangles on the side of the screen. And then we have children inside of them. And these are these blue looking rectangles that you see on the side of the screen. So it's just a nice little hierarchy that we can use to traverse up, down, and sideways throughout the entire DOM. I also linked a JavaScript file here called script.js. And I have that open here. It's just a completely blank file. And what we're going to do is go over all the different ways we can traverse the DOM. And probably the most simple way that you can think of to traverse the DOM is to select elements in the DOM from the document. For example, if we wanted to select an element by ID, which is something you're very commonly going to do, let's just add an ID to this grandparent. We can say grandparent ID. Let's make sure that's spelled correctly. There we go. And then if we go into our script, we can just say const grandparent equals we want to select an element from the document, so we'll say document.getElementById, and we're going to pass in here our ID, which is grandparent, whoops, grandparent ID. And what we're going to do is we're just going to say grandparent.style.background, whoops, background color. We're just going to set that to this grayish color so we can see it. And when we save, you can see that that red color has now turned into this grayish color on the right side of our screen because we've selected the grandparent element by ID by using this get element by ID method and then just changed the background color to gray. For now, I'm just going to create a single function here that says uh, change color. We're going to pass it an element. And all this is going to do is you're just going to take our element and apply that color. So we can say element that style. And then we can just say change color of grandparent and that'll change the color of our grandparent. Everything works the same as before. This is just make it easier for when we're selecting multiple elements, we don't have to copy over this code all the time. So now that we have that done, we talked about how we can get elements by ID. The other most common way that you'll probably see element selections is with class name. So we can select our elements that are the parent by the parent class and just say const parents equals document dot get elements by class name. And here you just pass in a class name in our case parent is our class name. And then what we can do is just take our parents dot for each, and we want to just change the color. Now, if we save that, you'll notice that we get an error. And if I just inspect our page real quick, we can go to our console that says parents dot for each is not a function. And that's just because when we call get elements by class name, it returns a collection, but that collection doesn't have a for each method. If we just convert this to an array though, by calling array dot from, this will give us a array, which has a for each method. Now you can see we've changed the color of both of these parents, which we selected from the get elements by class name. So with get element by ID, we can only ever select one element because only one element can have an ID. That's the reason they're called an ID. But with class names, since multiple elements can have class names, this always returns to us a collection of elements, in our case, two different parents, and we changed the color of both of them. So now we understand the get element by ID and get elements by class name. Next, I want to talk about probably the most popular selector that I use, which is query selector and query selector all. So with query selector, what we're going to do is replace this selector for our grandparent up here. So I'm just going to come down and create a brand new selector for a grandparent variable. And let's just comment this one out up here. And now instead of using document.getElementById, we're going to say document.querySelector. And what this does is it says, I want to select one element. That's why it's just query selector. And then what you pass to it is a selector, like a normal CSS selector. So if we wanted to get an element with the ID grandparent ID, we would just put the pound symbol and then type in the ID grandparent ID. 
and this is going to be the CSS selector to get an element with that ID. And now if we just comment this out and we want to change the color of our grandparent, we can say change color of grandparent, save this, and you can see that now that grandparent has turned to that gray color because we used query selector to select one single element and we just passed it a CSS selector. And if you're not very familiar with CSS selectors, I have an entire video that covers every CSS selector you need to know. I'll link it down in the description below and the cards. So I highly recommend you check that out if you're unfamiliar with CSS selectors. So now we understand how we can replace get element by ID or really any selector where we want one element with a query selector. We could also select an element by class. So we could select this grandparent and we know that this has the class of grandparent. So we could just come in here and say, dot grandparent, which is the CSS selector to get this class. And now if we save, again, it stays as that gray background color. And even if we had multiple elements with this back or with this class, it would still only select one because we used query selector. We can see this by replacing our parents here. So we can say const parent, and we just want to get one parent. We're going to say equals document dot query selector. We're passing in dot parent because we have that class of parent. So now, in order to see how this works, let's just change the color of our parent here. And I'm gonna get rid of all this extra code that we don't need. So there we go. All we're doing is selecting a single parent and changing its color. And when I save, you're gonna notice it changes the color of just this first parent. Because the way query selector works is it selects one single element and it just gets the first one it finds. So in our case, this div with the class parent is the first one it finds. So the very first div turns gray. And the second one, while it still has the class parent is ignored because query selector just gets the first thing. If we wanted to get all the elements that match the selector, we would use query selector all. And this will get us all the parents. And what we can do is just say parents.for each, we want to change the color. And now if we save this, you can see both of the parents have their color changed because this is going to select everything that has this class of parent. So these are probably the most common ways that you'll see selecting elements from the document. You have getting it by ID and getting by class name, and then you have what I consider the most popular ways, which is query selector and query selector all. I use query selector and query selector all pretty much exclusively for all of my selection needs. Even if all I'm doing is selecting an ID, I still usually use query selector instead of get element by ID, just because it's consistent and easy to work with. So now let's go back to where we select just the grandparent. So we're going to say grandparent, oops, grandparent, and here we have grandparent. And we want to just change color of grandparent to make sure this is working. And as we can see, we have that grandparent being selected. Now, what if I want to get the children of this grandparent? In JavaScript, this is very easy. We can just say const parents equals grandparent.children. This is going to get us all the children element of the grandparent, which in our case are these two divs that have the class of parent. And now what we can do is just convert this to an array. So we can say array.from in order to use the for each method. And we can just say parents dot for each change the color. Now, if we save, you can see both of the parents have their color changed. And if you didn't want to use this array dot from, you could just do a normal for loop, for example, and that is going to work just fine. Or you could do a for of loop or whatever you want. This just, in my opinion, is easy to work with. So that's why I'm using it. So now we have a way to select the children of an element. And if we wanted, we could say const parent one is equal to parents of zero, that's going to get us our first parent. And we can say children are going to be parents, or I'm sorry, parent one dot children. So now we have the children inside of this parent. And what we can do is just say that we want to change the color of children. And we want to get the very first children. So we're just going to get the first child and change its color. So now you can see that this very first child here has been changed to gray. And the way this worked is we got all the parents, then we just got the first parent. And from that first parent, we got all the children, and then we got the first child of that. So we're able to really easily navigate down the tree from the very top element to the very bottom element. What happens if we want to skip all the way down to the child level? We don't care about any of the parents or anything in between. We just want to go straight from grandparent down to child. You may think this is difficult because all we have is this children method. But all the methods we've talked about so far, get element by ID, get elements by class name, query selector, and query selector all, work on every single element, not just the document. So I can say that if I want to get child one, that's just the same as doing grandparent dot query selector, oops, selector of child. And this is the class child. Now, if I change the color of child one and save, 
you'll notice I still have that same child being highlighted as gray. And that's because I'm able to select with Query Selector that first child. If I wanted to get all the children, I could just come in here and say children. And then what I could do is just say children that for each, I want to change the color. Now, if I save, you're going to notice every single child is selected because I'm able to just use a query selector on any element. It could be the document, it could be the grandparent, it could be the children. It does not matter. We can use query selector, query selector all, get element by ID and get element by class name on every single JavaScript element, which is really useful for when you want to navigate deeply inside of a single element. For example, navigating from grandparent to children. Now, what happens when we want to go the opposite way, though? Let's say that we start with a child and we want to go upwards to the grandparent. So we'll just come in here and we're going to put an ID on our child here. ID is going to be child one. And what we're going to do is select our child one right here. And we're just going to select it with the ID of child one. So now if we just change the color of child one to make sure this works. Save that you can see that this is the element we currently have selected. And what I want to do is I want to move up the tree. So currently we've always been moving downwards. I want to move up and select parents. Well, we can get the parent of child one by just saying child one dot parent. And you can see that there's a parent element and a parent node. Now, honestly, it really doesn't matter too much which one of these you use. But in our case, we're going to use parent element because we want to make sure we're always selecting an element and node could sometimes select something that's not an actual element. So just remember parent element is the one you probably want to use. Now, if we change the color of that parent, you can see we've changed the color of the parent of that child we selected. We can do another one by getting the grandparent, and that's just equal to our parent dot parent, oops, parent element. And now we can take the grandparent and change its color. And you'll notice that this red now turns into this gray color. So we're able to navigate upwards one parent at a time. But you're probably wondering, how do I skip parents? What if I wanted to go straight from child one, to the grandparent? Well, luckily, this is very easy to do. We have a method on child one, which is called closest. So we can say dot closest. And closest works very similar to query selector, except for it moves upwards instead of moving downwards. So you pass it a selector. In our case, we know that our grandparent has the class of grandparent. And what closest does is it selects the closest parent element that has this selector. So now when we save, you can see this grandparent is still highlighted in gray. And that's because the way closest works is we're on our child, it moves up one, and it says, does this match the selector we have? In our case, this class of grandparent, it does not match this div, so it says no. Then it moves to the next parent and says, does this one match the selector? In our case, yes, grandparent does match this selector because it has that class, and then it just stops right there. It returns this element and doesn't continue to go further. So it always gives you the closest parent that matches the selector you pass in, just like query selector gives you the closest child that matches the selector you pass in. So at this point, you understand how to move up the tree, down the tree. The only thing left to do is to figure out how to move side to side. How do we select sibling elements? So let's just come here. We have child one. What if we want to select the sibling of child one? Because right now, we just save this. You can see that this child is the one that we currently have selected. Well, if we wanted to get child two, all we need to do is take child one and we can say next element sibling and this is going to give us the next element which is important next sibling could give us a node and like i said we want to make sure that we're always getting the next actual element so next element sibling is perfect for us now if we take child two here and we save you can see that we have child two being highlighted in this gray which is exactly what we expect and what we want we can also move backwards though going from one child to the next if we said child two that previous element sibling this is going to move us backwards one element in the sibling hierarchy, which is going to move us back to child one. So if we save, we now have child one reselected again. The next element sibling gives you the next element, in our case, moving from this child, this child. And if we wanted to go previous element sibling, that's going to move us from current element backwards one of these siblings. These sibling selectors are ones I don't really use too often, but all of the other selectors I use in literally every single program that I write and they're crucial to your JavaScript learning experience. And that's all there is to DOM traversal inside of JavaScript. If you enjoyed this video, then you're gonna love my full JavaScript course, which is linked down in the description below. I highly recommend you check that out. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.